go and help me i'm having reoccurring vaginal itches what can i do i've been taking antibiotics over and over but it's still itching i get a lot of sores what can i do about it i'm here to help you hi guys i'm gwendolyn halle your seasoned medical microbiologist so what are we waiting for let's roll in if you just joined this class and you're enjoying this content don't forget to smash that subscribe button and share with a friend so everyone gets empowered i did a video on the difference between vaginal yeast infections and uh, vaginal bacteria infections that's vaginosis and it's important that you watch that video so that you will be enlightened i'm doing this video to help a lot of females because i receive a lot of messages from females asking me what they can do about this situation that they have been taking antibiotics and they don't know what to do and the itchy seems to be to be reoccurring and they are struggling with it and sometimes they have pain during penetration i did a video on the difference between a bacteria vaginal infection and a fungal vaginal infection that is a vaginosis bacterial vaginosis and candidiasis so these two have different ways of manifesting in females what i see most females do is when they have a vaginal itch they don't run to the doctors to get tested they actually try to self-medicate or do self-prescription or they go to a local drugstore and they are giving antibiotics when they are supposed to be taking an antifungi. And sometimes they are giving an antifungi when they are supposed to be taking an antibiotic or even an antiparasitic because there are some parasites that actually cause vaginal infections. So, the reason why I'm doing this video is because if you don't do a vaginal swap and if you don't know how these microorganisms, that's parasite, viruses, bacteria and fungi manifest in the vagina, if you don't know their characteristics or how they manifest or if you can't do a spot on diagnosis, you will end up taking medication after medication and changing the flora of your vagina and making your situation worse. Bear in mind that you cannot use an antifungal to treat a bacterial infection. Neither can you use an antiviral to treat an infection caused by parasites. And you cannot mix them, except the drug has a combination of antibiotics and antiparasites. Most drugs have that combo. So it's very important for you to get a vagina swap. What are the symptoms of candida albicans or candidiasis? Pain during penetration, especially when the vulva and the clitoris, the lips, the labia minora and the labia majora are inflamed. Whenever the man will try to penetrate the woman, she'll be having pain at the entrance of her vagina, a superficial pain at the entrance of her vagina. There's always pain during urination. And if you, are, if you don't go for a test, this could be mistaken for a sexually transmitted disease when it's actually a candida infection, a fungal infection. The third is you'll be experiencing frequent urination. The next is you have inflamed vulvas. Your vagina walls may get inflamed. Your clitoris area may get inflamed. And also you'll be discharging, not an awful smell discharge, you'll be having creamy cottage cheese-like, creamy, thick, plumpy cheese-like discharge. And if you don't go for a test, you may mistaken this for the discharge you get while you're ovulating. And then you have itches on your vulva. And the thing is the itches, when you scratch, they form micro openings or micro wounds that only when urine touches would you know how painful it is. It doesn't get painful when soap or detergent touches it, but when urine does. 
And the truth is, when you are rubbing around the lips or of your vagina, it will be so sweet to scratch that it will pain or leave micro wounds then. So what do you have to do? You have to go to the doctors. Make sure you go to the doctors and you get a vaginal swap. And this will be tested and an antifungigram and an antibiogram will be done. Now, only then will the doctor be able to prescribe you the best antifungi to help you. Presently on the market, you can use fluconazole, which is very good with fungi infections. Fluconazole treats candida real good. But this is where the problem is. If you have had this infection for a long period of time, if it's recurrent, if it goes and comes, you need doctor's prescription. You have to take this antifungal drug for a longer period of time and take it the way the doctor has explained so that you break the interval. So what are the causes of vaginal fungal infections? Number one and the most common is the abuse of antibiotics. This could be through self-prescription, self-medication, or not taking the antibiotic as the doctor prescribed. You know, self-prescription has messed up a lot of ladies. When you take antibiotics for a long period of time, even when it doesn't prescribe by the doctor, you can develop candidiasis or vaginal fungi infection. That's because the healthy fungi in the vagina begins to overgrow. And when it overgrows, it causes candidiasis. Number two, using strongly scented soaps. Number three, autoimmune diseases such as lupus, diabetes, and a lot more. The next and the most common cause of vaginal yeast infection or vaginal fungi infection is douching. And this is very common for ladies who stuff cloves, stuff garlic, stuff things into the vagina because they are trying to clean it, tighten it, stuff alum. They are always going to have this problem. So what can you do to treat this? You can use fluconazole, which is the best on the market. And you can have this as a tablet. You use a cream or you use a pastry that you insert into your vagina. When do you need to see a doctor? You need to see a doctor when it is recurrent. When you have had it for a long period of time, it goes and it comes, it goes and it comes. And also, if you have an autoimmune disease, if you have a health complication, remember that drugs, some medications do interact. And when they interact, they reduce the active ingredients, the effectiveness of the active ingredients in the drugs. So it's best, it's best to actually go see the doctor so he can actually prescribe the best medications for you or maybe even switch some medications so that they don't interact. Another thing you have to do is make sure that don't use an oral root tablet to put it in to your vagina and don't use a vaginal root um, medication to take it orally. I see a lot of people who go to the drugstore pharmacy and when they are given a fluconazole tablet, they want to insert it into their vagina. And some people, when they are given a pishri, a pishri is just like a tablet. Instead of them inserting it into their vagina, they take it and they swallow it with water. You have to be very careful. Take medications like they are prescribed. Another thing you have to do while you're on this treatment is you don't have to get involved in any sexual intercourse. Whether you're married or not, just abstain until the treatment is properly, is properly done. And make sure you take the treatment at the right time. If you have had this infection for a very long period of time, when you start taking it, especially the oral root medication, make sure that if, you, if you're taking uh, 
your drug appeal at 10 a.m. in the morning. The following day, you take it at 10 and continuously. Don't skip the time. It's very important so you break the cycle and take it for the length of time that the doctor asks you to take it for. You need to see your doctor if you're pregnant, if you're over 65, if you're taking any form of oestrogen tablets, if you're also uh, a patient, if you're also a patient and you know, you're know you experiencing some side effects with the medication, please go back and see your doctor. Now, a lot of people have asked me, Gwen, can I take cloves, eat cloves, take garlic? Take some of these other herbs to treat vaginal itches. And the truth is yes and no. And why do I say so? That would depend on the microbial load. Now, when you're talking about treatment as a microbiologist, it would depend on the microbial load. Let's take, for example, I have a cold. I have a cough. I can take lemon and honey with some apple cider vinegar, and it can clear it off in the space of three, four days. That's because the microbial load isn't that heavy, isn't so high. And so natural herbs, natural things can cure it. Natural home remedies can treat this. But if after four, five days, I'm still having this cold and cough and this kata, this runny nose, then I know that the microbial load, whether it's caused by bacteria, a viral, or a fungi, it's a lot more higher. And the lemon, the honey, the apple cider vinegar can't help me. So then I will need to go see a doctor. This is the same thing with itches, vaginal itches. When I'm talking about taking natural herbs or natural ingredients, I'm not talking about insecting them into your vagina. If you are having a vaginal itch, you can take some natural bio yogurt. You can take some cloves, some honey, some apple cider vinegar through your oral root. Drinking it and making sure that it is going to help you down there. You can also have neem leaves as a tea. Now, if you take these health um, herbs or leaves as a tea or these health teas, and after three, four days, and it hasn't stopped the itches and you don't feel better, then you go to see the doctor. But I'm never going to advise any lady to insert anything into her vagina. All teas, all herbs should be taken through the oral route. So how can we prevent having vaginal yeast infection. The point number one is don't abuse antibiotics. I see a lot of people when they have a runny stomach, when they have a constipation, when they have movement in their tummy, the first thing they go is they run to the pharmacy, they grab a flagyl, uh, they grab a cipofloxacin, they grab amoxicillin, they grab tinimidazole, they grab a lot of things just to take. That's because they don't want to go and pay for consultation. Now, what happens is when you have taken these drugs for a very long period of time and um, it actually affects you down there, or when you take drugs that are not actually targeted to help you with the infection that you have. And bear in mind that not all antibiotics is going to kill or is going to eradicate or kill a particular bacteria. There are some antibiotics that eradicate the bacteria in a short period of time. So it's best you go to see your doctor so you get a good prescription. And also taking drugs for the right length of time. There are people that when they start taking a drug, what happens is they actually start taking it. When they feel better, they stop taking the drug. You, you make your situation worse. You abuse it. You abuse the drug. And in the long run, <laughs> it's going to play on you. And what you we don't want is uh, an antibiotic resistance. If there's an antibiotic resistance, there will be a lot of problems. Another thing that I see a lot of people do is that 
They take antibiotics with dairy products, with milk products, with products that contain milk. And this is not good because it reduces the effectiveness of the antibiotics. So then you have to take antibiotics for a longer period of time, you know. So this is something we have to watch out for. Another thing is that we need to avoid douching, inserting things into our vagina. And the third thing is that we have to let the doctors know if we are taking any other drugs. When you go to the pharmacy or when you meet a doctor or the pharmacist, tell them that I'm taking these drugs. Can I take them together? Drug interaction is very, very serious. And I know in some countries they don't care. But if the two drugs interact, it will reduce the effectiveness. You know, there's something called uh, in pharmacology, pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics. You know, you, you need to study this to be able to understand that whatever thing you take in needs to be good for you. And you need to take it the way you have been asked to take it. Another thing you have to do to prevent these fungal infections in the vagina, don't double dip. That means for those who are having anal sex, don't insert a penis or a sex toy into the anus and then you insert it directly into the vagina or you take it from the anus and you put it in the woman's mouth and you take it from the mouth, you put it in the vagina. What you're, going to, what you're doing is you're taking feces, you're taking bacteria from the column, a fungi from the column, from the anus, and you're bringing it into her vagina. So thank you for joining me in today's class. I remain your seasoned medical microbiologist, Gwendolyn Hallett.